This overview of the DAT format will focus on alignment issues using the Panasonic DAT transport found not only in the models listed, but also in products made by other manufacturers. While this video cannot address all of the common transport issues, fixing the loading tray squeak is easy. Remove the side and rear screws that secure the top cover. Locate the gray pulley behind the two line line gears on the right side to the rear of the loading mechanism. The type of oil is not critical. Use a pinpoint applicator to keep excess oil from dripping into the transport. Oil both sides of the gray pulley. Easy, right? Insert a non-critical tape and enter the hidden features by simultaneously pressing Mode, Reset, and Pause buttons. Press the mode switch three times until the red AB appears at the top left center of the display. Connect the scope probe to the test point labeled R3CP, press play and confirm that a low frequency square wave exists at this connection. The scope should be set to trigger on this signal. The RF envelope test point is located on the preamp board at the rear of the transport. Be sure to set the scope probe to times 10 so that the probe does not degrade error rate. Select the second input on the scope and adjust the gain as shown. Note that the envelopes are aligned with each transition of the head switching pulse below. The envelopes are healthy until a wrinkle in the tape distorts the waveform. While the head spins at 2000 RPM, the tape speed is 8.15 millimeters per second or one third of an inch per second, slower than an analog audio cassette. You can easily see a deformed section of tape as it moves across the head drum. Here you can see the amplitude of the left RF envelope diminishes several times. The clog doesn't affect both heads equally because the ferrite head for the left envelope does not protrude out as much from the head drum. The right head protrudes more and self-cleans as the tape passes. Severe head clogs are the result of tape binder hydrolysis. Translation, the glue that secures the oxide to the plastic absorbs moisture. Sometimes baking can help and sometimes it doesn't. The machines should be off so that the two white gears can manually be moved to position the loading tray for access. One finger can apply the cloth to the drum, while the other finger can rotate the drum counterclockwise. One-handed head cleaning is not recommended. Budget restraints forced me to be both director of photography and hand model. You can see oxide lines moving up from the bottom center of the cloth. A big clog turns on the cleaning light, but audio still comes out. Please note that the first error rate of 328 is due to the scope probe being in the times one rather than the times 10 position. Had the probe been correctly set, the error rate would have been no higher than double digits. Using a modified screwdriver, you can see how adjusting the guide on the entrance side of the head affects the left side of the RF envelope. It is not advisable to adjust tape path on Sony transport that use set screws to hold the alignment. Four screws secure the loading tray, a.k.a. the cassette elevator. The wiring harness must be disconnected and the gears positioned to make it easier to lift and remove the tray. Four screws also secure the transport and there are several wiring harnesses that must be disconnected. Look how pretty. With the power off, the loading tray is connected and set to the side. Now it is possible to manually load the cassette using all the tricks you've learned to repair damaged tapes. The cassette is secured in place using a weight, which in this case is a padlock. Power up, pretend to load a tape, and press play. If all goes well, it's time to connect the scope probes as previously shown. No matter which digital cassette format, I advise popping the cover and familiarizing yourself with a working transport, like this one. Experienced users know that this Panasonic model loves to eat tape, and we'll get to the why of that toward the end of this video. I chose this transport because tape path can be adjusted without loosening the locking screws. 
First, I will adjust the entrance guide and show how it affects the left side of the RF envelope. Adjusting the exit guide affects the right side of the RF envelope. Note the error rate as the tape path is being adjusted. All zeros is very good. The following applies to all digital transports. When scanning for start IDs and locate points, there will always be a little overshoot. To compensate, the transport must enter reverse play under capstan control, just to get a wee bit ahead of the start ID. If the tension is not right, the tape can skew out of the guides and off the capstan. Note that clockwise pinch roller rotation is forward. This transport has been put into reverse play four times, yielding inconsistent results. Notice the last time when the tape rides nearly all the way up the capstan until the direction is reversed. From this precarious position, the tape requires a very long time to settle into place. One reason this Panasonic transport likes to eat tape is because the take-up reel table becomes a supply reel in reverse play. Yes, this part of the video is a little fuzzy and the parts are very small. Notice the lower rim of the reel table being pointed out by the screwdriver. In reverse play, a soft brake is applied to the rim to add tension. Less than one quarter of the brake shoe touches the rim and it wears out very quickly. There are no replacement parts and the fix is tricky. Dangerous tape path and reverse play can also occur if the exit guide is either misadjusted or not secure. Notice that no amount of adjusting seems to satisfy and upon closer inspection, the plastic swing arm that secures the exit guide is cracked. During the threading cycle, the spring-loaded arm will momentarily jam, often launching a loop of tape all the way into the head preamp area. Summary. There are various grades of DAT transport, none without flaws. Many Sony transports have two separate reel motors. These are generally more reliable because there are fewer moving parts, belts, clutches, etc. Then there are the consumer grade transports that rely on the capstan motor to also drive the reel tables. Those would include models made by Pioneer and rebranded as the Fostex D5 and the Tascam DA20. Tascam's DA30 Mark II, DA40, DA45, and DAP1 Portable use an Alps transport. The Panasonic transport in this video, as beautifully machined as it is, also relies on the capstan motor to drive the reel table. In short, there is no free lunch. <laughs>